us to try to cling on to that idea, we find it too challenging for just one person, or even just one group, or one country. So we learn to give up on it. But I'm here to tell you that world peace is possible, but it is only possible if we focus on, if we stop focusing on is the issues, the problems of war and terrorism, the things that separate two groups of people, and start focusing on how we can unite what makes us similar. Let me give you an example I'm talking about. <laughs> about three months ago, the North Korean dictator, Kim Jong-un, as you can see his picture, invited, being a huge American basketball fan, invited Michael Jordan to visit him in North Korea. However, not wanting to be that middleman, that guy standing between two competing countries, Michael Jordan declined. Now, interestingly enough, Dennis Rodman, as you can see, decided to take that as an opportunity to step in Michael Jordan's shoes and go to North Korea. And during his four-day trip, Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un had great conversations with each other. But they didn't talk about peace. They didn't talk about nuclear war. They didn't talk about anything like that. They instead talked about what they loved to do basketball, something they're passionate about, something they like to do. And after Dennis Rodman's trip, coming back to the United States, he made plans to visit North Korea again this coming August. And the U.S. government is trying to convince him that it needs to be more of a, a peacemaker, to try to actually get peace talks started. However, when you start, if you ask for peace or try to talk about it, we can't obtain it. We need to instead try to establish this sense of togetherness, this sense of trust, a sort of building block that we can build a relationship on. For if we, our problem is that we try too hard to get to the end result, that peace between two nations, and don't make these steps to get there. And the reason peace is so difficult to talk about is that commonly, the two countries involved are on two different levels. They're unfamiliar with each other, and it makes it difficult. Now, this might be just a big world example, but we can bring it down to the individual. All the time, we see best friends who argue with each other about the littlest of things, and they feud and stop being friends. And they focus solely on what made them argue, what makes them just a little bit different, instead of realize that why they were friends in the first place. World peace is possible. And it's possible when we realize that, yes, we may be different, but it's because we're so different that we have, we share similarities, no matter how obscure they are. They are. We can establish connections. It no longer needs to 